Hi, this is Sherry Alberoni, and you're listening to TV Confidential. This is a warning to all living mortals that whosoever opens this chest of demons will release 13 of the most terrifying ghosts upon the face of the earth. Ed Roberts wants a reminder that singer, actress, and impressionist Marilyn Michaels will join us in our second hour. Marilyn's new book, How Not to Cook for the Rest of Your Life, is not a cookbook, but it is filled with food for thought on famous people. We'll tell you more about Marilyn's book when she joins us in our second hour. In the meantime, Greg Airbar is with us for another look at recently released DVD and streaming titles that we think you'll find of interest. Greg Airbar, of course... Two-time Grammy-nominated, multiple Addy Award-winning writer for television, animation, advertising, and publishing for Disney, Warner Brothers, and Universal. Greg Gerber, also the co-author, along with Tim Hollis, of Mouse Tracks, the story of Walt Disney Records. Greg's animation spin column can be seen twice a month at cartoonresearch.com. For more on Greg, gregairbar.com. What do you have for us tonight? I have a brand new Scooby-Doo original movie, but I want to also refer it to a previous Scooby-Doo series. This is kind of an exciting thing for Scooby-Doo fans, and there are a lot of us out there. Otherwise, Scooby-Doo would not continually be what truthfully is the longest-running TV character franchise in history. There are occasionally a Flintstone-related film. Willa Simpsons is the longest-running primetime series, but... Scooby-Doo is celebrating right now the 50th anniversary. There's no balloons flying through the air or banners, but 1969 was the first year, and there are still new Scooby-Doo products everywhere. And it's amazing that what is essentially, and it could be argued that there's more to it than that, but what is essentially one format, it's a ghost, and it turns out to be some guy scaring people away from something. There's an unmasking, and I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for you meddling kids, has been done to death. It truly must be more than that for it to have lasted this long. And with that in mind, here's an example of how they have managed to expand on that format. The series was called The 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. It was on a 1985 on ABC and Saturday morning. And Saturday morning was changing and slowly fading away. But this was a very cool series. And one of the reasons it was was because it had a genuine, perfect guest star in the form of Vincent Price. Not an imitation of Vincent Price, but really Vincent Price. He was in the role of Vincent Van Gogh. <laughs> he was <laughs> he was a headless crystal ball like in the haunted mansion mm -hmm. it was a series that almost was like a mini series it was a self-contained 13 episode series the saturday morning did not do arcing stories and i think we've talked about that before that wasn't until more recently because you can arc now with streaming and with video and things but there was an overall storyline in that in the first episode, there was this secret chest that was unearthed and the chest was opened through the ineptitude, of course, of Shaggy and Scooby, who are basically Abbott and Costello meets Frankenstein. And that is part of the reason the series has lasted so long, because you've got Shaggy, who was sort of based on Maynard G. Krebs on actually he was based on Maynard in a way. I think the history of the series goes to Dobie Gillis, goes a little bit to Jack Armstrong, to I Love a Mystery, which was a radio series. Mm -hmm. Actually, a young Tony Randall was on. There's a whole history to Scooby-Doo mm -hmm. that it evolved and it was developed different ways. Fred Silverman had a lot to do with it. Joe Ruby and Ken Spears, who were idea men and started out as editors at Hanna-Barbera, developed it. They went on to do their own company. But... This series was unique in that it had Vincent Price as Vincent Van Gogh, and you saw him for the first time towards the end of the episode because it only starred Shaggy, Scooby, and Daphne, who I always had a crush on. I love Daphne. She was the classic Hanna-Barbera heroine. All of the characters were designed by Iwo Takamoto, who was the senior artist there and designed a lot of the characters 
from about the mid 60s on and he had worked at the Walt Disney Studios. There is a book that he wrote where he talks about his life. He was in one of those Japanese internment camps where he, he was drawing his sketches for years and has a fascinating, interesting life uh, about when he worked at the Disney Studios and how he went to Hanna-Barbera and because of its size at the time, there was more room for him to grow as an artist and more opportunities. In a way, because it was the 60s and animation and theatrical was going away, there was more room creatively at Hanna-Barbera because Disney wasn't doing all that much in the way of theatrical or television at that time. So he designed those characters. And Daphne, to me, has that classic Hanna-Barbera heroine look. So that's pretty cool. So the series has to do with these two silly ghosts, one of them voiced by Artie Johnson, who plays a lot of roles in this series. And Artie Johnson didn't do a whole lot of Hanna-Barbera things, but in this, he is a presence continuously playing many roles. They trick Shaggy and Scooby into opening the chest by doing a game show spoof. Now, there's a lot of satire in this series, much more than in the previous series. There's a lot of send-ups in this. There's one episode where they're sucked into a newspaper comic and they're each in their favorite comic strips. And Scooby's favorite is Platypus Duck. <laughs> and it's actually a self-contained cartoon with his own theme song. I've got a beard, but I'm not a bird. I'm a mixed up mammal and a crazy cluck. I'm Platypus Duck. Hiya, Scooby. How do you do? Hi. I hear you got yourself in quite a school. And he is voiced by the legendary Howard Morris. So you've got a who's who of voice actors and a lot of asides, a few pop culture references, uh, but a lot of one-liners, funny, funny stuff. And there's a character named Flim Flam who some people might find annoying, just like Scrappy, who is also in this series. Scrappy is sort of, to some people, the jump the shark character. Uh, I don't mind Scrappy. My sister always thought he was adorable. I have no problem with Scrappy, but he was the antithesis of Scooby because he was a tiny dog who wasn't afraid of anything. And so he would pull them into danger. And of course, Scooby and Shaggy wanted no part of danger and ghosts. So that was what he was there for. And he came later in the series because they did need new ideas. So that is the layout for the rest of the series. They have to get all of the 13 ghosts back in the chest. And Vincent Van Gogh is a wizard who is assisting them from his little crystal ball. He is wonderful because, as we discussed in a previous interview with the wonderful David Frankham, when he was being mentored by Vincent Price, then they worked together in Return of the Fly, and he said, you take every job that comes along and you give it your all. You treat every job as an important job. He's wonderful on this show. He, this is not phoning this in. He is funny. He is scary. He narrates the opening titles. He really puts a lot into this. And it's a great combination. It's wonderful that this exists because we don't have Vincent Price anymore. And here he is on Scooby-Doo. It's a, it's a match made in, in horror heaven. We're talking to Greg Airbar. Greg Airbar is telling us about the current release of a show that originally aired in 1985. Scooby-Doo and the 13 Ghosts, which features the voices of Vincent Price, Howard Morris, among others. Scooby-Doo turns 50 in 2019 so that means scooby-doo is eligible for arp that's true and it probably takes it probably gets a lot of food that way discount <laughs> the scooby snacks you know they just used to sell scooby snacks they probably do i mean they're not the same as in the cartoon right. but Chaggy eats them too so i'm sure there was some kind of an edible thing but they did sell them and lord knows we bought them and they were mighty tasty <laughs> <laughs> We're there. Yes, you we're, gotta see what they're like. We're there. But we're, we're there. What's cool about the series is each episode was a self contained story because each ghost was different. So it tied in with a different kind of storyline, all highly satirical. Every one of them a send up of some kind of a genre, like the one I mentioned. Well, that was my favorite with the comics. Some of them had original songs in them. You know, they did It's a Wonderful Scoob. Of course, you know, what would things be like if Scooby didn't solve mysteries? That's Scooby's parents. 
uh, they had one with a carnival. They were trapped, in, of course, inside a Frankenstein movie. So that was the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. But there was one little caveat there. Because Saturday morning had to run in cycles, just like all of those shows we've talked about before. You have a setup episode, but you never finish it because they ran them at least like three times. And then they would maybe run them three more times. And if the show was very successful, they'd maybe make six to eight new episodes. And that would pretty much be it for most series. In this case, there were only 13. But because the first episode set up the premise, there wasn't a first ghost. So there were only 12 ghosts. So for the last 35 years, we never knew who the 13th ghost was until now with the release of the new DVD, Scooby-Doo and the Curse of the 13th Ghost. So we all been waiting on the edge of our seats. And if you're a Scooby-Doo fan like Greg is, we will ask you to hold on to your seats for just a few minutes more before we talk about that sequel. Greg Airbar is with us as we devote this week's DVD and streaming report to the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, which originally aired on ABC in 1985, and the long-awaited sequel to that series, Scooby-Doo and the Curse of the 13th Ghost, a new, original, feature-length TV movie that was just released a few weeks ago by Warner Brothers Animation. We'll carry over our conversation with Greg into our second hour. Then we will welcome actress, singer, and impressionist Marilyn Michaels. All that more coming up in hour number two of T. V Confidential. Stay with us. You can listen to this show all over again as a podcast on TuneIn, iTunes, Spreaker, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and other podcast platforms. Best of all, it's free. To find out how to subscribe to the TV Confidential podcast, go to the homepage at televisionconfidential.com and click subscribe now. If you haven't been listening to TV Confidential, this is who you're missing. Michelle Nichols. Adrienne Barbeau. Leonard Malton. Joyce Bulletin. Peter Onorati. Judy Norton. Ken Berry. Rhonda Shear. Michelle Lee. Jacqueline Smith. Bill Antonio. Shirley Jones. And many, many more of your favorite celebrities and people behind the scenes in the world of television. That's TV Confidential. Every week on this station and every day online at tvconfidential.net. We have a few minutes, enough time to tell you about our new subscription program called Confidant Access, Confidant Access, featuring additional monthly rewards. As a TV Confidential Confidant, you will receive a brief preview of each week's edition of TV Confidential before it is broadcast, exclusive access to audio streaming or downloadable MP3s of the last five years of audio archives of TV Confidential, featuring more than 400 hours of interviews, lively discussions, and inside information. You'll also receive the opportunity to email questions in advance for possible inclusion in guest interviews, plus exclusive access to classic editions of TV Confidential that are not otherwise part of the current five-year archive, plus approximately once a month, Confidants will receive special access to the hosts of TV Confidential via Skype, plus Confidant-only access to bonus content and more. To find out how you can become a TV Confidential Confidant, go to televisionconfidential.com and click the purple Become a TVC Confidant button. Televisionconfidential.com, click the purple button that says Become a TVC Confidant. Accredited by Guinness World Records, welcome to Archival Television Audio Incorporated. A peerless TV soundtrack archive preserving the audio from television's first three decades, the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, the golden and silver age of television. For more information, go to atvaudio.com. Uber is the mobile app that connects you with a driver for immediate transportation. Request a ride at the tap of a button and you have a driver curbside in minutes. You can choose to be driven in a black car, SUV, or you can choose UberX, the low-cost Uber for a ride in a hybrid or mid-range car. Payment is seamless and cashless, billed to your card on file with no need to tip. Enter the promo code TVCONFIDENTIAL after you download the app to receive a free first ride up to $20. For more information, go to get.uber.com forward slash go forward slash TV Confidential. 